wisdom and came here for an 18 minute talk. And you know, 18 minutes for us is a rather short time frame. 18 minutes for an African elephant today is a time frame between life and death. Every 15 minutes, in Africa, an elephant gets shot today. Every 15 minutes, more than 100 elephants a day. And I'm here to show you a way how we can stop this killing. The CITES conference that was just um, happening this week did not find a way. And I think this is unbelievable, we have to change this. But I, will, I brought you something else too, and this is whatever you are passionate about, well, you'll discover three tools how you can change that and follow that passion. So let's see, and let's go back to Africa. There's an old saying in Africa, which is, if you want to go fast, go by yourself, go alone. But if you want to go far, go, to, to go together with other people. So what does that mean? It means that together we are much stronger. But speed in my life as an entrepreneur was always critical for success, always. But then, after 10 years when I started to work with politicians, mainly on campaigns and bringing them into power, I understood that for them, speed is not priority number one. For them, priority number one is power, coming into power. So there's a big difference in that, and I had to learn to become patient. I learned more about patience in Africa, but we'll get to that. <laughs> Believe me. And patience is very hard to keep if you believe, just like one of my heroes, Ilabat, who I met for one of my books on female leadership in Ahmedabad. Um, you know Ilabat? She's the founder of SEVA, the Self Employed Women's Association. And she stood up for something, just one single person, just herself, and said it's not right that the self employed women that don't have any support are not even allowed to collect garbage from the garbage halls in India. Just men were allowed there. So she fought for them and did an impressive, impressive job. Millions of Indian women today uh, can benefit from that. So, and I talked to her about the change and the patience that I obviously don't have or didn't have enough. And she told me, just look at the world today and how it is, Kirsten and you will see the status of our world today is a direct result of its leaders and the people. So there is a combination between, obviously, between the leaders and the people. And when I was with Barack Obama in his 2008 campaign, I realized that first of all, there's a politician that was all about change. He basically represented change himself. Just look at him, young, colored, someone from basically outside the political establishment. Nobody believed he would win at that time. Not even the so-called experts on TV, including myself, I may have been that. But Hillary Clinton learned that you never underestimate a political adversary because he did, as you all know, had a tremendous campaign talking about change and bringing change to Washington. And I remember one day when I was standing in Washington, it was a cold, cold morning, and he talked to thousands of people. And I remember one sentence he said, and I brought him here today to bring that sentence back to you, because this is my mission today. The sentence was, change does not come to us, it comes through us. Through us. That means we have to do something different than we did yesterday. Otherwise, we are not able to bring change to the world. And this is my mission today, not just bring change to the killing of African elephants, but re making you realize the power of change that you have within yourselves. And I call this the power of you. So what does that mean? What does that mean to realize which power you have? Well, first of all, you know, do you know the lady Candace Payne? An internet phenomenon? She was a housewife in Texas. This is how she looked like. Yeah. She's not known from the media. She was not known a couple of weeks before something really weird happened. She posted a video on Facebook, buying a mask, putting it on in her car, and talking about the little gifts in life. It was a very funny little video clip. 
not connected to a message for change, for climate change, for elephants, nothing. It was just a little clip, and you know what happened? 140 million people around the world shared that clip. They liked it, they gave it to other people, and then what happened? Once something like this, something, there's a disruptive number appears, all of a sudden all the media jump on it. Of course all the corporations jump on it. She was invited to Mark Zuckerberg, to Facebook, and she became a hero. I would say today, unfortunately, a hero that was not connected to a message which was important for her, for a different world, if it's for climate change, gender equality, AIDS, or if it's against killing African elephants. So if I look at my life, and I know TEDx is about sharing your experiences, and I tried to put that together the day when I came to Marrakesh, and it was quite hard because it's always in my mind there was just one message. It was the message about the power of my own dreams and my passions that I did follow all the way through. And I love to dream big. And I'm sure all of you have those pictures somewhere in your drawing. You might not show them publicly, but I do. My mom is okay with that. That's me. And But already then, I dreamed big. I dreamed about becoming an entrepreneur. And I dreamed about meeting people that not a lot of people meet. I dreamed, dreamt about winning prizes that no German had ever won. I met about meeting politicians and helping them bring their message to the world, and I did. Although my teacher said you will never be a consultant because your handwriting is so bad. So if you have a bad handwriting, go to politics and tell them. <laughs> so, but my biggest dream and my biggest passion was sort of anchored in my childhood. And that was my dream of going back to Africa where I had lived as a child. And this is not a stuffed animal as you see there, it's a cheetah that I met after I had become a ranger. And I'll take you a little bit to Africa. This is when I lived there. But more importantly, when I went back, of course, if you want to become a ranger, you, first of all, you live in the wild, which for a CEO from a Berlin-based consulting company traveling the world, top notch, it's, you know, you're not used to living in a tent anymore. You're not used to, you know, look out for snakes and lions, and especially if you can't shoot at night at that point, Time I could not. But you are all of a sudden in a magnificent nature, in the magnificent nature of Africa. You meet animals where you get blown away just from the pure beauty. And you get blown away from understanding, although you are some sort of important person in some small, small, small area of the world, if you stand in front of an elephant or a rhino or a buffalo, you are very, very small. And the rule I learned was against the rules that I had worked with all my life, and that was the rule of speech. In Africa, if you are out in the wild, the rule number one is, whatever you do, don't run. If you're in front of a lion, you don't want to turn around and run. You want to hold your ground and try to show dominance, and just hope that he doesn't attack. Right? Same thing with elephants or with rhinos. So I had to readjust. I had to re relearn something that was completely new to me. Speed, as I said, for me was something critical. But you know, the most important animal, and I did write a book on it, um, it's called Elephant Wisdom, Learning from the Elephants. Um, unfortunately, it's not in English yet, so let's keep dreaming. But uh, what I learned from them was the power of awareness. And as a manager, and even as a family member, or with my own family, I all of a sudden realized that that was something I was not very good at, to realizing what a matriarch of an elephant herd can do. Every couple of minutes, she stands still, completely still. She doesn't move. If she's drinking with her trunk, she won't move the trunk. If she's eating leaves, she won't continue to eat. And I asked my chief ranger, I said, what is she doing there? Why, you know, what, what's going on? And he said, this is the power of awareness. She realizes how she feels herself, where every single member of the group is, of the herd. And if something has changed in her environment, and I thought, oh my God, you know, me as a business person, I should learn from that because I'm never completely focused 
on my team members, on my clients. You know, I look at my Facebook account, I look at my watch, I do little marks on my iPad. So learning from elephants meant a lot to me. They are the most social and the most intelligent animals that I've ever come through. And they're very emotional. As you see here, they even mourn about their dead. And we've all heard about the elephant graveyards. I'm telling you, it's true. They touch the dead elephants, and you see they, the, the, the tusks get cut off with chainsaws, so part of the head is gone. And I'm telling you, if you see them over and over every day, it's heartbreaking. So they touch them and they say goodbye, the old ones and the young ones. And what I've seen in, in, in elephants, and I think we can all take that into a community of trying to find a new level of coexistence with animals, but also with each other, with religions and whatever is different to us, is to establish rituals that are playful. Elephants do that all day, except that they eat a lot of time too. Uh, but they play with one another in the water, with the young, with the old, and through that play, they establish rituals of understanding and of loving one another. But as I said, and this is why I came here today, I've learned a lot about humans too. I've seen elephants, complete herds of elephants that get murdered, at least the ones that have the tusk. And even the elephants that survive that, the young ones, because they don't have tusks, they die afterwards with NGOs like um, in, in Africa that foster those baby elephants. They just die because they're so traumatized of what happened to the herd at night. And we're talking about high-tech, murder-equipped groups mainly paid from Asia or Russia, they come in at night within a couple hours, they find the elephants with night sight binoculars, and they shoot them with machine guns. And I might just tell you, a ranger usually doesn't own a machine gun. We have a rifle. That's all we have. And we have uh, folk, whatever. Radio. CBS. Is it CBS? Radio. 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 Thank you. Oh my god. <coughs> Bilingual. So, and coming back from Africa, going back into business, I asked myself, how can this happen? How can politics fail so badly with that? And I found the answer, and it's so simple that it's frightening. It's the power of money. One kilo of an elephant tusk costs around $1,500. The one who shoots the elephant just gets the smallest portion of it, the smallest one. But all the rest, the traders, the Yahoo platforms of the world who trade ivory products, the, the corrupt policemen, the politicians within the countries, the harbor people in Dar es Salaam, etc., they get cash. And as long as the system is not interrupted, it will continue because cash drives the world. And now you might ask, well, what can I do? And I've worked with NGOs around the world trying to answer for them that question. What can we do to stop whatever we feel passionate about? And here's what I think. I think you have to understand the pyramid of power. And that works the following way. First of all, as you all know, there are millions of messages around the world. You know, every day you get thousands of thousands of messages. You read it, you see it online. And some of the messages get condensed to the media and so all of a sudden support people that are believe them political leaders, they have corporations, etc. So, but this is old economy here. This is old economy because what we can do is that Candace Payne, that housewife of Texas, has shown that to us. We can connect people using the internet. We've got more than a billion people on Facebook. We've got more than 700 million WhatsApp users. They're out there. Once they are connected with the message, then this message will Flow the media, and once the media repeats a message, believe me, the politicians will listen. And once the politicians will listen, the corporations will follow. Because in the end, we're all voters, we're all consumers, and they all want us to buy their products. So, and how do we do that? We use our iPods. We look at things just like that Candace Payne video on YouTube. We look at the same thing that combines the message. Wherever the eyeballs are, the power of the media and the power of the money goes to. It's a crazy world, I know, but this is how it works today. So now if we look at businesses, we will understand that, and we all feel this way here at TED, the 
the art of business has to change, and it has to change through us. Gandhi said change begins with us. Obama said it comes through us. So what do we do in order to change the art of business? Well, first of all, by giving clear signs of, no, we don't support that, by giving clear signs of what we stand for, of what our values are, and we ask for companies that find a new balance between profit and impact. And I've talked and I've worked with a lot of companies, and you know what they tell me? They say, well, you know, you might want to read our CSR report. It's probably like 100 pages long, Nestle's, for example. A company that steals water in Africa and sells it back to the people that talks about CSR to me, I am sorry. We have to change this, and we can. And I'll show you the three most powerful weapons I think you all have. And they actually, most of them have them right here. We'll try this. So, the weapon number one, and if you find it on your body, on your pockets, please show me, is your four finger. Can I see your four fingers? You have four fingers? Oh God, yeah. I see around 200 four fingers. And there is another weapon, probably in a pocket somewhere, and I know it's on silent mode, but it is a tool, and it's very powerful. That's your cell phone, your iPhone, your smartphone, whatever. So if you take that finger and push and like and share what you feel is important, those messages that need to be multiplied, we are a winner. And the last part, probably the most important one, or at least just as important, is your money. Every single dollar, every single penny you spend is important. As we have heard today, you decide what company gets sanctioned for doing bad business and what company, which social enterprise gets your money. It matters where you buy your t-shirts, which coffee you drink, which shoes you buy. Everything matters as long as we realize and we use our power to talk to our friends and connect with them. So, I like, you know, I do a lot of talks and I love doing speeches, especially for companies, always hoping that they will change. But what I like most is action. So let's try to make some action here today. If you go on Elephant Wisdom, which is a Facebook page. It has around 1,089 people following it. You can create that change right away. Candice Payne, again, she had a rubber mask on and generated 140 million people. My goal is much, much smaller. 1% of that, which is 1.4 million people. Once we have that, and you'll see that sign on Facebook, we will distribute that sign through WhatsApp and through the digital world to those political decision makers that need to hear it, to those companies that need to produce t-shirts with it, coffee marks with it, I don't care, as long as we use the money for the change we want to see in this world. So, if you don't have Facebook, I know some people don't like it, just go online, you'll find that little uh, picture there and use it, and afterwards, all you need to do is share, 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 share. And so, you have done a lot for elephants today, and we'll see in a couple of weeks how many millions we got. You can be part of this, but you also can do like the, use the system for anything you are passionate about. Elephants is my big passion, and hopefully you go with me on that. But some people are passionate about climate change, about AIDS, about um, dolphins. So the key is to find your passion, and usually you don't just find it talking to Facebook, you know, to your friends, looking cat videos. You find it by connecting with organizations. And once you find those, once you find those NGOs you want to connect with, you click, you like, you share. And you make sure that their message gets heard. And then you post and you ask, start asking questions in your business and in your families. You go back to your boss and say, well, what do we do to impact climate change? What do we do in our company to help the elephants? You probably, they don't have a lot of good answers, but you need to find them, and once you ask questions, you'll get an answer. And once you find your NGO, and your people you want to engage with, you will have a lot more power. So when I landed in Marrakesh two days ago, I got reminded that, and I know it's from the climate event happening here, but it's, it's the right word that was put right onto the airport. Together, we have the power to act. So I hope, that you understood that change, actually that it's a lie, that change is so complicated. In the digital world, it's a lie. It just takes the power of us. And once we do that, with our finger, with our cell phone, with our money, change will happen. Thank you.